Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Theta.com video where we're going to be taking a look at how to install Oracle uh, VM and Steam OS together. So you're running Steam operating system on Oracle's a virtual machine or virtual box, should I say. It's very late here, so if I speak a little bit off, then I can only apologize. This is like the second time I've recorded this. It's the first time the video file decided to fall over. I would also hasten to point you to the direction of the article I've wrote with this which has not only the screenshots for everything that I've done but also all of the commands exactly written down so you can just check those out. Now uh, with that all said to do this you're going to need a few applications I've given them the link in the article so you can just download them easily as well as the link for the Steam OS. So you're going to need ISO Creator, you're going to need Oracle VM Virtual Box. Once again, these are free. You can check the links uh, or you can just Google them. Completely up to you. And you're also going to need the Steam install. Um, and that is Steam OS installer. It's that size. So what you're going to need to do, first things first, is just to, uh, well, install them and then once you've got all the app, once you've got Oracle and you've got ISO Creator installed, you'll need to basically unzip the Steam OS installer. So to do that, right click and then uh, just tell it to go to that path. I'm not going to do that. Do that. I'm sorry because I've already well done it. So as you can see, all of mine are right there. So you know you can just peruse a few of the directories just to make sure that everything is good and dandy. Now you need to create your ISO. So what you need to do to do this is you need to first of all browse to the directory. So I'm using Windows 8. Uh, so on mine it is the E drive and then I just need to scroll down to virtual machine and then Steam OS installer and then just click OK. Then I need to browse once again just select the directory. OK that's cool. I'm going to call it um, pew pew because obviously you know not got anything called pew pew and the volume name you could just name that whatever but I'm just going to call that pew pew and then you just click start and then it will start writing the data. I'm just going to tell it I don't want to write the data uh, because I've already got it so it's just wasting all of our times to do that. And I'm just going to uh, delete pew pew as well because you know no point in having it. Now this is the point we need to work quite closely on. You've got an ISO file now which in my case the main one is Steam ISO so it's about one gigabyte in size. Now once you first load up Steam, uh, sorry, once you first load up Oracle's VM virtual box you're going to have none of these installed uh, by default so um, there's a couple of caveats and I've mentioned these in articles so you can check those out. The first is you need to make sure that you've got virtualization technology enabled in BIOS. If you don't, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have an error. Um, it's basically going to happen as soon as you try to even load the machine. You're going to come up with this error. To get rid of it, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go into your BIOS, obviously restart your computer, probably hit the delete key, and then in a, make sure that you've got virtualization technology or a variant thereof in terms of the name enabled. I can't give you the exact name because it's different for every um, well, motherboard and BIOS. On mine, it's called Intel Virtualization Technology, and I'm using a Haswell processor. For you, it could be called something different. If you're unsure, you could uh, just do some Googling. So I would suggest you just Google your motherboard and then virtualization technology. You're going to need that. Now, assuming that you've already done that or whatever, you need to click New. And we're going to name it, I don't know, Steam OS RGT Demo. Sounds good. Now, for the type, it is a Linux install, and we're going to be using Debian. So make certain that you're selecting Debian 64-bit. You're going to need to select a certain amount of memory for this. I've got quite a lot of RAM in my system, so I'm going to be selecting 4 gigabytes, which is pretty decent, I think. I think it should be uh, enough to give us a fairly speedy box. Create a virtual hard drive now. That's exactly what we want, so you know, go ahead with that. You want VDI and dynamically allocated is fine. You can select this to be whatever depending on just how much you're you know, intending to install. This is not going to be my final installation. This is just going to be me kind of messing about for you guys. So I'm going to click create. It will take just a moment and then we've got this don't load it just yet. 
right click and select settings. You can ignore all of this, uh, including basic. That's fine. You can give it a description, but I don't really think there's a point. Um, untick floppy because it just makes things slower. This part is crucial. Make sure you've got enable FE special OS only or you won't be able to boot. Okay. And the processor and acceleration, leave those. Uh, you'll notice that that is indeed enabled. Next, under display, so that was under system. Now under display, you need to max out video memory. And you also need to enable 3D acceleration. Under storage, we'll leave that just for a second. Under audio, that's all fine. Under network, enable network adapter, change that. You need it to be a bridged adapter. Uh, let me just check something. Okay, I'm just making sure I've got all my settings. So I have got a note on this, as I said. Okay, one last thing we need to do. Um, for me, I found massive, 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 massive issues unless I were to do this. Um, so I just, I'm going to add my keyboard and I'm going to add my mouse to this. Or I, I was always getting issues. I don't know why. It just was one of those things. Um, basically the keyboard and mouse just wasn't working properly when I set it up so that's all you need to do so I'll just you know you know what if you guys uh, need this again once again it's on the article anyway so yeah I would recommend you check the article if only for the commands because they're pretty lengthy in some cases they are Linux commands now you need to choose a virtual CD or DVD and in my case that's that so you just double click and that's pretty much all she wrote you just click OK. Now, um, we click Start. I'm sorry, guys, this might be a bit noisy. I need a drink. Uh, just leave that to run while it's doing that. Now you're going to get the shell. And this is basically a Linux um, commands I needed on this. And for me, the backslash key does not work. I think it's because I'm using a British keyboard. For me, on this it actually becomes the tilde key without a slash so it's the hashtag slash tilde key now if you can't find it on your keyboard because I've heard people that simply say they cannot you can just um, bring up the on-screen keyboard in Windows so that's one way you can go if you're just like okay I can't find this for love nor money you know it's um, it's really confusing me what the hell is going on then all you have to do is just do that okay anyway uh, now we need to type in a bunch of commands so first things first we need to type in FS0 uh, I've got all these root down uh, that one that one and then FE and then boot and then finally boot x640 okay so I'm going to leave that on screen just for a second. So that's FS0, and then you can see the rest. Once again, I've got all these commands wrote down on the articles if you do need it. So if you do miss something, don't worry. You'll get that error. Don't, don't, don't panic, okay? That's fine. Now, it's going to ask you what you want to do. Now, you've only got one option, really. So just ignore the others and uh, just press Automated Install. And it will take a moment. Basically, it's going to start installing many shiny things in the background. So, you know, just don't worry about it. As I said, it will take a while. So don't, don't worry about it. It will take a moment. There you go. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to cut this out. Uh, in a moment because it's just going to install everything. I would like to point a few things out however before I do that. First things first, this is a beta so not all of the tools are installed yet and despite the fact that yes it's fun to play around with but there is some functionality that's not there. It is however pretty cool because well it's free um, so that's kind of nice. I have to confess, I've been messing around with it a little bit all day. And it has a couple of bugs that, you know, are frustrating. But that's just kind of the nature of it. It's a beta. And in fact, it's not even like the beta that they're kind of giving to most people. They're pretty much saying that the beta is for 
users who are familiar with Linux or basically have patience. So anyway, okay guys, now we're back. Installation is complete and it's going to ask you to reboot. Don't bother to remove the installation media. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about that. You know what, let me just drag this into the center for you. Okay, so what we do is click OK and give it a few moments. It'll whirl and it'll basically uh, kill the processes. Don't let it go into Steam GNU Linux. It will basically hang on a black screen. What you need to do instead is to go to recovery mode. Just press enter and it's going to come up with lots of scary writing. It will just take a moment and it will basically say lots of interesting things. And basically now we are in uh, the console again. So now, um, first thing you have to do is to... Well, for me, I have to find my bloody mouse cursor because I've got multiple monitors. There we go. Click on Devices and then click on Insert Guest Editions CD Image. So simply click on that and then once again just give it a second. Now we need to type in make der. Um, okay, I've got to remember which button this is. Ah, oh, there we go. For me, it is the button above tab between uh, one, so it's basically the tilde key for that squiggly line, which I can't I'll actually remember what it's called off the map, offhand. Uh, Vbox adds slash. That will create a directory for us. Now, we need to mount this. Uh, basically, we need to mount the the additions and then basically install it. So to do that, slash dev slash disk slash by id slash. Now, we're going to have to find your CD drive. Before you start wondering how the hell you're going to do that, under Linux, what you have to do, just double click tab, or just double tap tab, and it will pop up. Now for me, you could see it's Atta VBox, and I'm probably going to make a mistake here, so you know, if I do, sorry. <laughs> this is what you get when you've got lack of sleep. ROM underscore VB2 0170376. Hopefully I've gotten all this right. And now we also need to add a space. And then, once again, I screw that up. That's always helpful. V uh, box adds, which is basically a directory where you already had, you might have guessed. So hopefully, V box adds. I think that's correct. Okay, so I've got the drive wrong. V box. Uh, by ID. That's our VBox underscore CD dash ROM underscore VB. There we go. So it was just the fact it wasn't a capitalized X that was giving us the issues. Cool. Now we need to basically go into the directory that we have just created so that would be in this case da 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 vbox as slash now if we type duh you're gonna see a list of basically the install commands we need the one that says vb linux editions dot run to do that in case you're not familiar with how to install things on uh, linux it's simply like that and this is how you install binaries in linux editions not run god i'm tired okay hopefully that's typed in correctly no it's not typed in correctly uh, v box linux a d d i t oh god there we go oh my goodness all right it's ridiculously late here at night guys i'm really sorry <laughs> I'm not normally a, such a shitty speller. All right, hopefully we're going to be cool now. It will take a moment to do this, unfortunately. <sighs> Basically, I tried to record this like I did record this a while back, and it was like all smooth sailing, no typing mistakes. And I spent and I uploaded it to YouTube after like I don't even know how many. Um, 
minutes and then after so many hours recording editing writing the article and then basically found out that it was kind of all out of uh, sync so i think it was the recording file so that's why i'm re-recording it all anyway um don't do anything else other than type reboot at this point so we have to do type reboot and basically it's going to send it the kill signal so everything's going to start shutting down um that's pretty much we have to worry about so just you know hold fire for a second and it'll come up with this this time don't go into recovery mode just press enter Sorry, by the way, for all these messages. I know they're kind of annoying, but, you know, whatever. It'll take a moment, so don't panic if it's like, oh, God, why is it on black screen for so long? Now, hopefully, we can just simply type in root. Oh, no, that's not what we want. I'm thinking about another one, sorry. Steam and Steam. And we just want the default X session for now. So just click Enter. And once again, it will take a moment to load. And, yep, okay. No, we don't want to run that. That's one thing we need to get rid of. So click on Devices, CD-ROM, and DVD Devices. Remove disk from virtual drive. Now, if we double-click on this, we can actually get it on full screen and stuff. You have got quite a few shiners on here. I'm going to show you guys just a moment the desktop. I'm not going to show you guys the big picture and that type of thing. You can check those out yourself. I'll probably just do it in another video because I'm absolutely completely and utterly destroyed tonight. So, but you've got various options. You've got um, various terminals and uh, other little shiners. You've got Ice Weasel, which is kind of a nice little web browser actually. So we can, for example, go to redgamingtech.com and we can make it full screen and do other shiners and you can of course do multiple tabs and whatever and yeah you can see that I've already got an article on that so you can read that if you so desire and of course you can do everything else so for example you can go to steampower.com I don't know why I'm doing this just to show you guys you've got of course a fully functional web browser um, you've got the ability to of course to search and everything else as far as I understand it we will be able to add things via uh, yum and other shiners and We've got uh, various help, which is nice uh, applications, as I said, disk utilities, system settings we can go into and can kind of play around a little bit. Online accounts, for example, brightness, contrast, and all of that other shiny stuff that you would expect. But as I said, I will be showing the big picture mode and the games probably tomorrow. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you're able to get it up and running. As I said, I would hasten to push you towards the article simply because you've got all the commands there if you are a bit stuck and that should just about do it so you know it's probably about 20 minute job once you understand how to do it anyway i'll see you soon take care bye for now